In today's video, I'm going to be upgrading the Creality CR10 S5 to a direct drive extruder. Let's get started. Okay, so you see in front of me here, I have the Creality CR10 S5 3D printer. Now, this has been around for quite some time and for many years, it was pretty much the only big printer you could get affordable. It's 500 by 500 by 500 millimeters of build volume, which is quite a big beast. The only trouble with it is it is a bit useless. You've got a massive heavy bed. It's the bed slinger design where the bed moves back and forward. You've got a big long Bowden tube that is fed from a drive gear at the side here. And the drive gear on mine has recently broken. So I figured it was about time I upgraded it to direct drive. I got a kit online, which is about 60 pounds for a ready-built direct drive extruder, which comes with the roller wheels, the uh, hot end, new cabling to go straight into the box of this printer. So it's pretty much drag and drop, and that cost me about 60 pounds. You do have everything you need on this printer pretty well to make your own direct drive extruder version if you wanted to where you would take off the drive gear here and mount it to the head, but you would have to design your own housing to enable the extruder gear to fit just above the hot end here. So that's doable, but I'm a bit lazy, and for 60 pounds to get new components, it's a bit of a no-brainer for me. This kit is designed to work with all of the Corality CR units, so if you fancy doing a direct drive upgrade to one of your Corality units, then this could be a suitable video for you as well. In my head, when you've already got a massive heavy bed that's moving about, it doesn't really matter if you've got a heavy head as well, because the bed is gonna slow your prints down anyway, if you're looking to get nice prints, so your head can't move any faster anyway. So without further ado, let's get this one installed. Fire this open, instruction manual for the setup, and we've then got this kit here, which comes with the cable, go straight into the printer, We've got our dual geared drive gear here, uh, coming down through a little bit of Bowden tubing into a hot end. It's got the fan on there. It's also got the radial cooling fan on the side, so it will also be upgrading the cooling performance of this printer at the same time. The roller wheels on the back and the stepper motor. We've also then got a stepper motor extension cable because obviously the drive gear is going to be sitting further away from where it's designed to sit on this printer. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is disconnect your Bowden tube and take off your existing extruder drive gear, which I've already done because it broke. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take off the tensioner, the X tensioner for the belt, and that's done by loosening off the two hex bolts at the side of the printer. We then need to take this off the printer. So to do that, we're going to loosen it I'll just lift the z-axis a little bit turn the eccentric nut to get it nice and wobbly you can then disconnect the belt by flicking it out where it's held in place leave the belt in place because that's going to be used again we can take off this belt tensioner and pulley for a minute I'm gonna pull this off probably should have loosened it a little bit more but anyway that is now off. It can be kept as a spare part or any of the pieces on it could be used for spare parts. Obviously you've still got your cooling fan, your part cooling fan, your hot end and the, the pulleys, which is a part that does wear down anyway. We're then gonna want to disconnect it from the printer and put it out the way. Right, now it's time to Install this bad boy back onto the printer. First things first, we're going to install the stepper extension kit. So the stepper motor that would have been on here will have a stepper motor cable going to it, the one with an E on it. And that one will then be used to go into the extension cable, like so. And then this stepper motor cable will go into here in a minute. Right, we're now basically going to do what we just did in a minute ago, but in reverse. So we're gonna loosen off this third wheel. 
and then slot it back onto the printer. The reason you can't just pull it along from the side is because these bolts stick out too far and it whacks into the side there. So we're loosening this wheel off, so it's flapping about like this. You can then push it on, reattach the ends of the belt. And then the other side. That's that on. You can then re-tighten that wheel back on so that this isn't flapping around. So that's now on there, rolling around nicely. We can attach the pulley and belt tensioner back onto the side. Okay, so that's the belt now tensioned. We can then take this cable and insert it into the control box. And then we can take the stepper motor cable we extended earlier and plug that into the stepper on this newly installed unit. Um, we're now pretty much there with the hardware installation of this new unit but there are a few more things to do and a few more things to discuss the first problem with this little setup is the cabling obviously there is no consideration for all this cabling flapping about and you don't want it getting stuck in your print so what I'm going to do and one possible option you might like to consider is just taking one of these this is a reusable cable tie which I've put on the top of the printer and I'm then going to take another one and just dangle it down so it's held at the top like so now you don't need a Bowden tube anymore obviously because this is now direct drive but I'm going to use the one that I took off just to strengthen up the cables and give them a little bit more support and then I'm going to take some cable ties and I always use reusable cable ties tie that all together like that just to give it a little bit more support and prolong the life of the cables Now from a hardware perspective, we are pretty much done. There is one thing I did want to point out though, and that is that you might lose some of your X axis and some of your Z axis from this installation. When I put this on a machine the other day, I found that I had to set the end stop, the Z end stop four mil higher than the base of the bed. So you're losing four mil off your max Z value. It's worth noting when you come to try and do some tool prints, uh, that you'll be looking at around a maximum of 496 millimeters rather than 500 millimeters. This one looks to be okay, but on the printer I installed this on the other day, a slightly older CR10 S5. The side of this actually hit the side of that and it meant that it couldn't trigger the end stop at its maximum point. So I ended up losing about 20 millimeters off the X axis. Uh, where it lost a little bit off this side and a little bit off this side. This one though, however, does seem to be able to go fully left and fully right. So we should still have the maximum X volume. As with any new extruder installation, you will need to change your E-steps. This one is similar to the stock one, so it would probably print okay to start with. But again, it's always worth tuning in your E-steps and there's loads of videos out there that you can find to tune your E-steps. If you're struggling to find one, maybe I'll make one as well. The little paper that this comes with suggests setting the E-steps to a starting value of 145. You're also dealing with a slightly different hot end setup and so it's a good idea to tune your PID values and again loads of videos on YouTube of how you can do that. I'm quite excited to get this started and see how the prints come out so I'll crack on with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, smash the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Lots of 3D printing content coming up in the future, so stay tuned. Cheers.